Alright, hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Sugar and Spikes podcast. I am Des, your lovely and faithful host, and with us today we have everyone's favorite uh, co-host. I'm the favorite. Some may say guest host, (laughs) I don't know. Um, I guess like not really a guest because you're you're so far. I'm a regular. <laughs> um, but we have Sammy. Hello, friends. So today I'm so excited because we are kicking off a kind of like mini series thing, and of course, like we decided to do this because we're super cool and forward thinking and do our own thing and with new year's coming up we want to talk about making things happen and hitting our goals yeah because we want to talk about new year's resolutions it's, basically under another name well, well because we're so unique <laughs> so unique right it's so true um but the thing is but we are yes. absolutely the thing is even if you're listening to this in like july or something like if you just stumble upon this there's still really good stuff and i mean tomorrow's a new day you can like set off and have new goals whenever you want it's not just a january topic i completely agree with you i mean i think it's like a big thing right it's like the buzzword in january but or and people set goals all throughout the year oh, yeah. so like how do you do that effectively mm-hmm. so today it's all about this idea of like honing in on what you really want because if you don't know what you really want then keeping up the game and spinning your reels and everything isn't going to go so great that's true Mm -hmm. because like i think a lot of times we have nebulous goals like i want to be happier yes we all do Mm -hmm. but what that looks like for you and what that looks like for me Mm -hmm. is very different and so that wouldn't be where I would stop with that goal, it would be more like, how do I know that that's happening, mm-hmm. right? I know we'll talk about it more, but yes, I agree with you. Yeah, and one thing that, that I have found is it's a really weird, delicate balance of having like somewhat vague goals, but also um, like letting them be their own thing and knowing when you've hit them Mm -hmm. because like so okay i I guess i can talk about this i guess i'm in a place where i can talk about this now okay um a couple weeks ago i had my birthday and last year for my birthday i had set an income goal for the business okay and that was what i'd been working towards all year and what i had been focusing on and then my birthday came and I didn't hit that income goal. Okay. I had done a lot of other really cool things. Um, and it's been it had been like a really magical, amazing, life changing year. And I didn't hit the income goal. I spent all day in my office crying about that. Uh huh. Because I didn't hit that, and I couldn't take space to see all the other things. Sure. So like, it's. It's coming up with goals that give you space Mm -hmm. and are defined. So can you talk about navigating that? Because I know you work with clients around this all the time. Yeah. So what I really hear is that you had this long-term goal. It was a year-long goal, right? Mm -hmm. Birthday to birthday. So a year-long goal, which I would describe as a long-term goal. Mm -hmm. But then you had all these short-term things that you did all throughout the year that were super amazing and great. Mm -hmm. And all those added up didn't quite equal your long-term goal but here's the thing i also hear a lot of talking in black and white Mm -hmm. you didn't make it however are you really where you started no so i think it's really important when we don't hit those long-term kind of benchmarks that we're really expecting Mm -hmm. to really take a step back which okay be disappointed and cry it's upsetting you work so hard this is something you like dedicated your life to for a year Mm -hmm. Definitely feel the feelings. I'm all for feeling the feelings. Mm -hmm. Feel them. And then when you have a minute, take a second and be like, okay, so I'm not where I wanted to get to. I'm not back at the beginning. Where am I in the process? Mm -hmm. And then you can reevaluate and strategize from there about how to get to your original goal. Maybe your original goal has changed. Maybe something is more meaningful you now meaningful for you now so like 
it doesn't have to be set in stone. So it's all those things we kind of talk about all the time, being flexible, feeling your feelings, Mm -hmm. and like recognizing that it's okay to be disappointed and how do you regroup after that process. And there was one thing that I was thinking of kind of during those couple days and everything um, and something that, you know, has become much more true after going through that, Mm -hmm. which I think is important to kind of continue on and share with folks is this idea of like okay so you didn't hit your goal like business owners anyone that's been in school like anyone that has goals knows you're not always going to hit what you want that's true like, you're not gonna have a perfect record it's just a fact yes it's not all or nothing um <laughs> it's, it's impossible to be perfect 100 percent of the time right and i think one thing is and this is I feel like kind of more for us overachievers out there, Mm. um, this idea of like challenging yourself of what went wrong. Mm. What didn't I do? What could I have done better? What was out of my control? Like kind of reflecting on, you know, because I feel like for a lot of things, like especially as an entrepreneur, and I think like this plays into students and even folks that are going for um, promotions and stuff, like we definitely have those moments, like those choice moments where it's I could work on this right now or I could go do something else or you know so like reflecting and being like what would I have done differently and then taking those lessons and then learning from it yes and I like that you said what would I have done differently Mm -hmm. it may be that because I I would challenge you a little bit Mm -hmm. because I would say is it necessarily true that you could have done something different that means you would have met that goal Right. We don't know. So trying to go back and say, well, if I had only just done this instead, or if I had only just done that, that's a little bit not very realistic because you made the best decision you could at the time. And even if you went back and made the decision that you think would have changed everything, it may not have. It may have a little bit. Mm -hmm. It may have a lot. It may have in ways that you didn't think about. Mm -hmm. So this idea that the one perfect thing that I didn't do would have completely changed it and 100% achieved it, I don't think that that's very realistic. That sets us up for failure, too. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for correcting and calling me on that. Like, it's not necessarily a one thing, but, like, where were those growth points? And, like, looking back in, you know, because I feel like we all have things where we did something and then it was a lesson learned and it's like, oh, I'm not doing that again. Oh, totally. And then, like, running with that. Yeah. Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. So what I really hear is that you're talking about growth. You're talking Mm -hmm. about Mm self-reflection of where are some points where I could have intervened and done something a little bit differently. And yet, and so then I can learn from that in the future Mm -hmm. versus, oh, if I had just done this one thing, everything would have been different and worked out exactly the way that I wanted. Right. So yes, I think we can always learn and grow. And I think that that, you know, experience is what teaches Mm -hmm. us that. And that's, that's kind of one of the things that I think is so cool about setting goals, any type of goal, um, is that, like, you have the ability to look back and see, even if you didn't hit it, like, until we say otherwise, let's go on with even if you didn't hit whatever goal. Okay. Let's operate under All right. You didn't hit it. Okay, well, I did all these other things, and I feel really great. That's a cool moment to have, and mm-hmm. those are important times to take. And, you know, space to hold for the things that you've done. Yeah. And even with a goal that you didn't hit, you have those times where you can look back and have kind of that critical Mm self-reflection of, oh, maybe I would have done this different and everything. So, like, one key piece to remember, I think, even if you don't hit the goal, there's so much that comes out of trying it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think it's it kind of goes back to that not seeing it in black and white. Mm-hmm. And yes, you're disappointed. And what were what did you get out of it? Mm-hmm. What were the positives that came out of it? What yeah. did you accomplish that you can be proud of? And then be disappointed at the same time that you didn't mm-hmm. get to where you thought you would. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the other thing is to remember is like, just because it didn't happen when you wanted it to happen, doesn't mean it's not going to Absolutely. So like I talked about kind of being on the path, where are you on the path to that end point? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're three quarters of the way there. Maybe you're a quarter of the way there. Maybe that is ultimately your long term goal. It's just there's more steps in between. Right. Mm -hmm. So even if you set a goal out for a year, you want to set goals in like 
two to three month increments, 60 to 90 days. Where do you want to be in 60 to 90 days, which allows you to reevaluate mm-hmm. and kind of course correct throughout the year? Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of the 90 day challenges mm-hmm. um, because I feel like it's long enough where you have some flexibility mm. um, for when things don't go right. Mm-hmm. And it's close enough that there's a certain amount of pressure to actually get shit done. Absolutely. And I also think it's very tangible. Like Mm -hmm. you can think in terms of three months, like a year. Yeah. Okay. In one sense, it's only 12 months, but in another sense, oh my goodness, it's 12 months. Oh my God. Like I think about, like, think about sometimes how, where you and I were a year ago compared to where we are now, even in terms of location, like who would have thought a year ago when we were sitting in your apartment that we would be where we are now? Yeah. Like, no way. Yeah. Right. So, so much can happen in a year. So if mm-hmm. you break it down into those more manageable pieces, mm-hmm. you have those touchstones along the way. Yeah. Yeah. So manageable, manageable pieces, anything else for like kind of framework for how to decide goals? Yeah. So I think you have a really great skill, like the fire driven goals mm-hmm. piece. I think that's really, really good because the way you set goals is important too. Like, the example that I used, I want to be happier. That's not a good goal for it. Well, of course we want to be happier. I would Everybody never, I would happy. never say not want to be happier, but that, but in terms of goal setting and the language you're using around goals, mm-hmm. that's really not the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, you want to have it be a little bit more specific than that. And I think that the fire driven goals really gives a good example of how to set those goals in realistic and definite language Mm -hmm. that allows you to achieve them more effectively. Yeah, and if you guys haven't heard uh, kind of how we talk about fire-driven goals and everything, the F is like future. That's um, I also use the F as like your five-year plan. Mm -hmm. So it is more of that long-term thinking, but then also um, the I is immediacy. So like what can I do right now to move towards that and what would like feed my brain so it's a positive thing so those are the more so the f is more like the Mm long-term goal and the i is more like the 60 to 90 day increments or even something more immediate than that yeah so one way i talk about it um in one of my courses is the i is like if i if i need to study for a test and i don't want to study for the test yeah then i'm gonna go buy a fucking candy bar i'm gonna hold on to it I'm going to eat it after I've spent 30 minutes studying for that test. Oh. It's that it's the rewiring of the neural pathways. Right. So it's setting up for like rewards and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then the R is checking in like, is it reasonable? Mm-hmm. And like, are the steps that I need to take reasonable? Because there's, I don't want to say there's nothing worse, but one of the, one of the shittiest things is like setting yourself up for failure. And I think we've all kind of done it at times. Totally. Um, I mean... Yeah. That's why the realistic piece is mm-hmm. so important. Is yeah. it a realistic goal? Mm-hmm. Am I going to be able to run a marathon in three months? That's probably not a very realistic goal. How am I going to get there? Yeah. And then E is, like, checking in, like, does it excite you? Mm. Um, because if it doesn't excite you and if it doesn't fuel you, then you're playing a game to lose, and that, that sucks. That's not fun. Absolutely. I completely agree. I mean, you want to be passionate about what you're doing, mm-hmm. right? And that's why we start off with the F and, like, future-oriented because, like, if those pieces don't make your heart skip a beat, then it's time to kind of reassess that. Yeah. If you're thinking and you're setting goals and you're just like, Ugh. That also makes it really hard to want to work to achieve them. It directly impacts, like, your motivation, And when you're doing new things, if you lack motivation, you're just going to go back to what you know. We're wired that way. Humans are wired that way. Mm -hmm. So change is, you know, hard work. So you got to have some fire, some motivation that pushes you towards change. I mean, the thing is, and I... I feel like I talk about this all the time, so sorry if I'm if I'm harping, but change goes against our evolutionary instincts. Mm-hmm. Like every morning when we wake up, our brain is like, "I made it through the day, doing what I did. I'm going to do that again because that means I'm going to wake up tomorrow." Absolutely. Like, 
it sounds so trite and so shallow, but there's so much to this idea of like we're creatures of habit. So doing anything that changes what we do day in and day out and like pulls us out of our comfort zone is huge. I know because we really like to know what's coming. So even in a situation where you don't like it, you may stay in it because at least you know what to expect. It's that ambiguity that I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's going to happen if I change that kind of keeps us where we're at, because at least if we know what to expect, we can deal with that. Dealing with change, you're talking about all these unknown things. How can you deal with the unknown? That's the kind of thing that creates a lot of anxiety. So you have to really be ready for that. Totally. So that is about it for today's um little mini episode i feel like we hit some good pieces um if you want more about kind of figuring out things about how to create goals that are going to push you forward and are going to be attainable and how to know that you're actually doing it because there's nothing worse than like feeling like you're doing all of this work and not really seeing any proof um and sometimes, like, the universe doesn't give us proof. We have to get, we have to make our own proof. Um, if you want more about that, I have a really awesome course that I love, and it's how to make shit happen when you're tired of trying to make shit happen. Um, and I'm going to put the link in the show notes. You can also go to desireww.com backslash make dash it dash happen. Um, and that'll take you to the sales page or just go to desireww.com and hover over courses. <laughs> you can That's the easier way. <laughs> um, so yeah, my dog's starting the class. So I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go and take care of the dog. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.